Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a 32 terabyte NVMe SSD. This thing is absolutely gargantuan in capacity, but relatively diminutive in size. And one of the coolest things about this drive is the fact that it's not slow. We've seen larger drives. We've seen like the Nimbus 100 terabyte SATA drive, but that was using SATA and it was dog slow. Let's call it what it is. This is very fast. We're talking like seven gigabytes per second sequential read and write. And if you're looking at the random read IOPS, you're talking about over 1.5 million 4K random read IOPS. This thing is blisteringly fast. And just to give you some perspective on how fast 1.5 million IOPS and how big 32 gigabytes is, I actually went back and just kind of was like, well, what could I compare this to that would be interesting? And what I found was we had a brand new at the time, Intel, it was a dual Intel Xeon E5 V4 server from Supermicro. And we had it at the flash memory summit floor in the August of like 2016. And we were showing the performance of Fizen's one terabyte SATA SSDs that were like brand new at the time. And we were showing like, hey, this is like a 24 terabyte array a 2U chassis, and it's able to do 1 million IOPS. So to put that in perspective, this has more performance than what we were showing off at the Flash Memory Summit 2016 show floor. That is absolutely awesome. An entire server's worth of storage performance and more and capacity in a drive that's a two and a half inch drive. And so in this video, what I wanna do is talk a little bit more about what this drive is, talk about why uh, people I think are gonna be using drives like this in the future, because there are some specs that I think folks are gonna to wanna to know a little bit more about. And when we talk about the testing, we have something that's super fun, like, uh, oh, we tested this in 17 different PCIe Gen 4 capable architectures. That's AMD, Intel, and ARM-based architectures, including some things like DPUs. With that, let's talk about the Micron 9400 Pro series. So what is the Micron 9400 Pro series? Well, here's a little just chart that Micron has, and they're talking about the different segmentation. And you know, there's like client SSDs that this is comes from more of the like the data center enterprise business. And there's really like client SSDs, and then there are the things that are made for data centers. And in that, there are you know kind of like this like mainstream like higher capacity but lower performance drives. And those are typically the things that you know are like using QLC NAND as an example these days. And there, you're really just trying to get the most capacity per dollar that you can while still maintaining like some level of performance. And a good example of that is actually this, which is the Micron 7400. I think there's a 7450 that we don't have, but you know, this is just a much smaller drive. Uh, this is a uh, this is a 3.84 terabyte drive and it's uh, much, much smaller. And the idea here, of course, is that this can fit in more places, more form factors. And just to kind of give you an idea in terms of form factors, I actually found that we also have an E1S version of that. We actually did a video with all the Kyoxia drives with showing off like EDSFF and all the, you know, E3S, the E1Ss and different thicknesses and all that kind of stuff. And so if you wanna learn about the new storage form factors, I'll tell you, go see that. We're gonna link it in the description. So the other segment that Micron has on here is this like enterprise storage segment off to the right. And that's really, you know, for something like this, which is a SAS SSD. So this is still using SAS, but it's an SSD. And this is only a 1.6 terabyte Dell one, but it's still 1 20th the size of this 32 terabyte drive. Now, this 32 terabyte drive is really for the performance enterprise storage single ported applications. So whereas the enterprise SAS drives and the dual port NVMe drives, those are really for storage arrays where you may have multiple controllers. So like if you have high availability, you have two controllers that have direct access to each SSD. That would be an example of why you would have a higher end drive that can talk to two, two different controllers at once. Because if one goes down, you still have access to the storage media through the other controller. And let's face it, in a server, you're most likely only going to have a single ported drive that's a by four connection because, well, uh, you only have one node that you're connected to. And so for like in server storage and all that kind of stuff, and also just for like scale out arrays, that, that's a good example of like what this 9400 Pro is really for. So looking real quick at the just spec sheets. So this is called a 32 terabyte drive. But what this actually is, is this is a 9400 Pro and the actual capacity is 30.72 terabytes. And you might be wondering, why do we say that this is a 32 terabyte drive? if in fact it's only 30.72 terabytes. And the reason for that is just over provisioning. We call it a 32 terabyte class drive. And this is a one drive write per day. So you could actually write 
30 plus terabytes to this drive every single day for years. And that's still within the warranty rating. We're gonna show you our testing on this in a little bit, but you can see that we get a total of seven gigabytes per second of sequential reads, writes. And then also on our 4K random read IOPS, we get 1.5 million and about 300,000 random write IOPS. We actually got a little bit more than that on our drive. And we'll show you, I think that's a little bit of a conservative number because Micron I think is using round numbers here. Now, this is only the Pro Series. There's also a Max Series, which is a three drive write per day version of this exact drive, just with more over provisioning. And at the smaller capacities, that means that you get about twice the random write IOPS. And at the largest capacity, which is 25.6 terabytes, you are getting almost two, but it's like, like 550,000 random uh, right IOPS, right? Which is just an absolute ton. Now, some folks might be a little bit nervous about this whole one drive right per day. I know that there are a lot of enterprise guys that are like, well, you know, I really, really, really want to have the maximum drive rights per day and all that kind of stuff. Well, like, like 30 terabytes, by the way, is a huge number. Just to kind of give you an idea, if you're writing sequentially to it, you're talking about, that's probably about an hour or so to fill the entire drive, just order magnitude. And the other side to that is that if you're doing, if you're actually writing sequential at that maximum, like seven gigabytes a second rate, um, you know, you know, that's, that's one of those ones where you're actually not hitting the endurance metric because that's kind of a, a they do a more worst case, like a 4k random, uh, right in endurance metrics. So if you're doing like sequential rights, actually you will get usually more, like way more endurance out of a drive than what it's rated for. And back in 2016, we did a project where we looked at about 400 plus drives that we had purchased on eBay and through like used sources and stuff like that. And we just looked at, you know, how many drive hours were actually on those drives when we got them and then how much was written to them. Because all the drives have those counters, right? To say how many power on hours and how many, um, you know, how much has been written to it. And when we looked at that, here's what the little distribution was. And this is by the way, when STH was much smaller, we just decommissioned some racks. I think I got like just one rack or part of a rack. I think I got like 300 plus DDR4 DIMMs back and we got a ton of drives. So this was when STH was much smaller back in 2016. But you know, just kind of giving you an idea, like the fact of the matter is that these drives really weren't seeing, um, you know, you really weren't seeing a ton of drive rights on them. And these were also much smaller drives, right? So these were NVMe drives, SATA, SAS drives, whatever they were, but they were also much smaller capacity, like 400 gigs or 800 gigs or something like that, because back in 2016, that was a much more common capacity and one that we could frankly afford. Now, something I know folks are gonna just kind of go into like crazy is, you know, why would Micron release a PCI Gen 4 drive in, you know, like in the same month that Sapphire Rapids is out, which is a PCI Gen 5 platform. That's actually what this is, is a super micro PCI Gen 5 platform. You can learn more about that, we'll put some links in the description. We're gonna be doing a review on this one pretty soon on the STH main site. But one of the big reasons that you would actually have a PCI Gen 4 is in the data center or enterprise space, these things have pretty long life cycles. So even though the the newest generation of PCI Gen 5, you know, systems are out. Well, what you're going to see is that the majority of ser servers that are shipped are still going to be like PCI Gen 4, some PCI Gen 3, and then there'll be a portion of them, which will be PCI Gen 5. And also, I just think that frankly, a lot of storage servers, a lot of them are not on the fastest, newest thing. We're going to have a piece looking at the pure storage arrays pretty soon um, that I filmed a little while ago, actually. But you know, th th they're not even using the newest generation stuff, right? So that's a good example of where, um, you know, like a PCI Gen 4 drive, if you're thinking like consumer mindset, like why are you not on the fastest? The enterprise and data center space is frankly just much slower than that. And that's why we have it. Of course, I do imagine that Micron and all the other vendors are gonna have PCI Gen 5 drives. But with that, let's get to performance because I think, um, I think that's super cool. Let's get to that. Okay, so first off, let's just do the four corners, the sequential read, sequential write. As you're gonna see here that this drive is actually one of the fastest, if not the fastest one that we've tested at this point. Now, something that we use in our hosting infrastructure is we've been using the QX CSCM and CD6 drives for some time. And something that you'll notice is that the sequential read performance of these drives is actually not that much lower, even though they're uh, you know a little bit older drives now, they're not like brand new 2023 drives, but still the, the sequential write or read performance is really pretty close. It's the sequential write performance where the Micron 9400 Pro really shines. The other one I wanna show you real quick is the 4K random read and random write workload numbers. And this is one where frankly, the Micron 9400 does super well. The right side, they are just slightly faster than the QXCS CM6. So you can definitely see that on the chart. And they also give you about 100,000-ish more random read IOPS than the QXCS CM6. And so that's actually pretty nice. And if you're wondering why we're using different capacities, again, this is just a thing where now we have the new Micron 176 layer 
multiplayer NAND, so we have more capacity that we have in these drives than we had in the previous gen. You're also gonna see though that we have the PCIe Gen 3 drives. And on that subject of PCIe Gen 3 drives, the reason I wanted to show PCIe Gen 3 is really because of this. This is the Intel DCP40, 510, and this is a drive that we used a ton of. But as we get through our application testing and to the end, I wanna explain why we have these drives in here. And it's really just talking about the data center replacement cycle. Most of the data center gear isn't just brought like new greenfield gear, right? Most of it is really bought to replace existing gear. And so what I wanted to do was just look at something that was like generally, generationally a good drive back in the day versus something that you would see as a good drive today. And so Eric uh, made this chart when he did the main site review and he did something that was a little interesting that we talked about that I think is really cool. So normally when you see these, you see that at the low Q depth, the lines basically converge, but then they start to get a little bit further apart on the right hand when you get to the higher Q depths, because of course you have a PCIe Gen 4 faster drive versus an old PCIe Gen 3 drive. And so of course that difference is gonna be a lot bigger. So on the left-hand side where you have low Q depths, you get really, really, really small differences and you can't really see the difference. So we have that gray line and that gray line is the percentage delta between the two. And so there between like Q depth four and eight, you start to see that we pass like 10% delta. But then when we get all the way up to the 256, what you'll see is that we're actually over 50%. And 50% of course means that, you know, if we're 50% better, that means we're at like half the latency. So that's the other way to translate that. And when you do things like a 4K random write, well, that is something where you see the Micron 9400 Pro just destroys the old drives. And we're talking basically twice the performance of the old drives throughout most of the QDEF range. So that's a really awesome uh, just kind of latency number. It's really important for things like doing your, you know, 99.99 percentile latency and all that kind of stuff. And we actually use the P4510 as our baseline drive for all of this, just because we had so many of them that that became our baseline drive. And they're also really popular back in the day. So that's the other reason. And so, what we did was we looked at just a number of different applications and we're gonna bucket these into a couple different buckets. The first one is an AI inference one. And that one is really just frankly dominated by the AI inference performance and the storage performance because so much is run in memory and on the accelerators is not really, um, you know, the storage performance is like, you're talking like three, 4% somewhere in there in terms of a Delta. So, you know, you're, you're not really getting a just giant boost with a faster SSD for something that is really memory and accelerator bound. And then we get to the Adobe Media Encoder one, and that's pretty similar where you do have some data movement in the script, but really where the vast majority of the time and like like the bottleneck is, is really in the compute and being able to encode stuff. So that is, uh, you know, just, you do see it bigger because we are doing more data movement on the drives. You do see a bigger impact, but it's not necessarily, um, not necessarily huge. And then we have our three KVM virtualization because we are a big Linux shop and we use KVM virtualization. So uh, th these are actually based on that. And so the uh, you know workload one, that is the one that is more CPU limited. So you see a smaller impact on the newer storage. Workload two, of course, the database is there. Those things do actually use a little bit more storage performance. And because they are using that right performance, we actually get a nice little bump with the Micron 9400. And then when we get to the, just the boot storm or booting a whole bunch of VMs and, and virtual machine desktops in KVM, that's where we really see um, quite a bit of performance actually out of these new drives. And then when we get to server applications that are a little bit more storage bound, such as the file server and Nginx CDN one, uh, you know, you're definitely gonna see that you get more performance and a lot more performance with the 9400 Pro. And one of the really fun benchmarks that we have is we take the STH main site. So it is literally the thing that's serving millions of folks every month. And it's, we're taking that and we're looking at what the profiles are in terms of file access, all that kind of stuff. And then using that to create an Nginx CDN and then just blasting traffic through that. So we're not capturing caching like we would on a normal application. We're also not doing things like backups and replication and all that kind of stuff that you do in a production thing, but it is using the production data set from a couple years ago on STH. And so when we look at that, this is actually one where the Micron 9400 Pro did really well because it's not just the write latency that is great on the Micron 9400 Pro, but it also has a very good quality of service on the read side and very fast read side performance. And so that's something that we do see in this benchmark. Now you might be saying, Patrick, but I have data Bases. They're not that big. I don't need 32 terabytes for it, but I need a lot of low Q depth performance. Like, what do I do? I don't know. I'll tell you exactly what we do on the STH main site. 
we run and in our forms and everything like that, every single database that we have uh, that we host out of, it runs on Optane nowadays. So uh, this is actually a P5800X, which is a very fancy, very expensive drive. And frankly, we don't have many of these because they are so expensive. Although because Optane has been canceled, they're relatively less expensive than they used to be. But what we you do use is this, which is the Intel Optane 905P, which is the consumer drive. Although you can see that it's basically in the same form factor that you would normally have it in a enterprise drive. And one of the really cool things here is that these things are built like freaking tanks. They, they, these things were so overbuilt because Intel was so freaked out about their, you know, Optane drives dying that these things have crazy write endurance. I mean, these things are like tanks of drives. And so, you know, when it comes to just, if you have something that is not a high capacity thing, but you just need, you know, a couple, you know, if you have a 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 100 gigabyte or something like that type, type of database, just go get the 905. P. These things are basically enterprise drives and they are super, super fast, even though they're still PCI Gen 3. But of course, if you need capacity, this is only 960 gigs. The P5800X, well, that one's only 800 gigs, the one that's in my hand. And this Micron drive is 32 terabytes or 30.72 terabytes. So it's just a massive difference in terms of capacity. So I still think that there is a place for this and you know, Optane is going away, but there are technologies that will take its place for, especially if you just have like high write endurance things or just need low Q depth form, stuff like that. There are like very specialized architectures, but for a general purpose drive, this thing is pretty awesome. And one of the most fun things that I just wanted to do, because I don't actually see anybody else that's really doing this level is we went out and said, hey, let's go find all of the PCIe Gen 4 enabled systems that we can possibly get. That means everything from like Ice Lake, but also like Ice Lake D. We have different generations of AMD. We have different things on the ARM side, like Ampere, Marvell, Huawei that you can't even get in the US, but we got a forbidden server video on that. You'll see in our, our description. And even IBM Power 9, just because that was a PCIe Gen 4 well before a lot of these other architectures. We also took the newest architecture. So the AMD Epic 9004 Genoa and also the new Sapphire Rapids, both in XC and MCC configurations and just saw how this drive performs. And so we use the AMD Epic 7002 Rome series as our base. And then we just kind of saw, you know, how, how close or how that performed on its four corners performance. And then we, you know, in theory, you know, the drive should perform the same on every architecture, but the realistically, you know, because of just the way that the processors are built, PCIe controllers, all that kind of stuff, the drives do perform a little bit differently on different controllers and in different architectures. So that's what we're showing here. It isn't like a huge difference between them, but you know, if we zoomed in too far, people would say like, oh, you don't have like, you don't have a zeroed, uh, zeroed X axis. And so, you know, that's what you get. You can't really see that much, but you know, there are definitely differences that we are seeing and we are tracking. It's just something that was just kind of fun to go look at. So, hey, what do we learn from this entire thing? Well, I can tell you one thing that I learned because the day that you know we were doing this, we also uh, had just gone out and bought the new M2 Mac minis and M2 Pro Mac minis. And so when you're looking at the Apple storage configurator and you're looking at things like, you know, $300 per terabyte, where this becomes like a, you know, $9,000 uh, NVMe SSD, um, you know, that, that's when you notice like, oh my gosh, like you get this level of performance, this density, and uh, Apple is charging you like probably more per gigabyte than that or terabyte than that. Like that's absolutely crazy. But you know, I frankly, I think that this thing is absolutely one of the coolest drives that we've tested. I also just want to say thank you to Micron. When I told them that we were going to do like 17 different systems, the challenge is that like, you know, you can only do like one a day basically by the time the scripts run. So you need to, you know, have somebody in the data center go and actually flip these things into different things. So we actually had two drives. Thank you, Micron, to be able to go and do that because, um, well, like, you know, it's just cool data to just go get, right? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was not a planned video. This is just one that I think a lot of people looked at the review and we saw the traffic numbers on that said, okay, let's go do let's go do a video on that one just for the heck of it and see how it performs. So we'll see how you know people like this one. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications. We have a ton of really cool stuff coming up pretty soon. And as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.